the dermatologist kept just, you know, upping doses and adding more and, and like, that's the definition of insanity, doing yes. the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. I would be really interested uh, I would love to walk, there's a local dermatologist here, and I would love to walk in there and say, what are your top breeds that are getting Atopica, Apoquel, um, Cytopoint, and I mean, Bulldogs are Absolutely. way up there on that list. Well, because- they call them the money maker. That's their yeah. job security. I mean, it's it's a joke <laughs> within the industry. It's sad, but it's true because that's they say like that's what keeps them in business. And I hate yeah. that. I hate that too. And, you know, unfortunately, because we, we set them up for failure with the wrong diet and we can talk about diet. So we set them up for failure with the wrong diet, with too many vaccinations, a bunch of chemicals that we throw at them. And then they have all these allergic skin problems, interdigital cysts. I mean, just everything. And bulldogs seem to be particularly prone to allergies and skin problems. Like they, they, until you know, before I knew what was causing all these problems with these dogs, and even now, knowing what causes the problems, trying to fix the problems after we've got so much damage done, it's no, oh, it takes a long time. Fix. It's no. not an easy fix. So, you know, but it, what, then once we start throwing these immunosuppressant drugs at them, now we've really screwed things up because the gut microbiome, which is so critical to everything, um, behavior, skin issues, allergies, <clears throat> immune system, so critical. So once we get everything screwed up and then we're suppressing the immune system, it's like, well, they don't stand a chance. Like we're I not know. curing anything. We are yeah. just spending money and prolonging Exactly, the and, and that's the cycle that these bulldog parents get into. And this is why they end up in our rescue because 90% of the bulldogs that we take in are surrendered because of issues that are caused directly from diet, over medication, and over vaccination, and it's just it's just so sad because we we really can do better than this. So that's why I try to use my platform to educate people. Um, I never want to judge anyone or force things on people, or but you know I'm always here to help people um, to give them information and let them do research on their own. I can get, provide them with resources, um, and, you know, hopefully get them on a, on a better path. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, one of the things it's, it's funny, my daughter, um, when we lived in New Jersey and she was in high school, she had a really top show horse and her trainer had bulldogs, still has bulldogs. I think she has five of them, uh, English bulldogs Mm -hmm. and they're adorable. But she came to me one day while, you know, Gwen was finishing up her lesson and uh, she came to me and she said, my bulldog just has these horrible allergies, skin problems. I just can't seem to get this better. I know that you do holistic stuff. Tell me what to do. And I asked her what she was feeding. And it was, you know, what was considered at the time to be one of the better kibbles, not that they're really is such a thing, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, she thought she was doing the right thing. She was spending a ton mm-hmm. of money. <clears throat> And I said, you got to stop. You, if I'm telling you, if you stop and you switch over to raw food. Mm -hmm. And so this was, oh gosh, 15 years ago. So, um, you know, the raw food I recommended at the time is not one that I would recommend now, but it was one of the early raw food companies. Um, And I said, let's just try, give, give your dog 30 days on this raw food and let's see what happens. And then mm-hmm. two weeks, she was like, oh my gosh, I have a different yeah. dog. He's got more energy, skin yeah. looks so much better, his feet aren't breaking out anymore. And so now she has five raw fed bulldogs that are all, you know, just beautifully healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, just a totally, totally different scenario than what she had before. Absolutely. And for me, it was just like, wow, I, I, I look like a rock star. And that was the easiest <laughs> <thing> ever. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, sometimes, and people can get results as quick as that. And then there are the ones that, you know, it takes months and months to dig out of it. I mean, one of our rescues, Mac, we've had him for three years uh, and he came to us with like horrible one ear, particularly really bad. And 
even to this day, we still tend to get a little bit of a flare up and, you know, it just, it's just an example of sometimes things do rear their head no matter what you do. Oh, and yeah. it just, you know, it's really hard to dig out. So people, I always tell people, please be patient. You know, it takes time. This is not going to be an overnight thing. Um, and most of the people that come to me asking for advice are people that really want to do the work, but it is work. It's a and lot of work. It and is a lot of work. The ones where I ran into problems in my practice were the clients who just wanted an overnight fix, yes. um, wanted it to be easy, didn't want to have to, to work on things, mm -hmm. which means working on the gut microbiome, mm -hmm. doing some different testing, trying to figure out what they are tolerant of or intolerant to, um, you know, detoxing all mm -hmm. of the crap that has gone into their system over time. And, you know, one, you're going to throw some money at it. But let me tell you, if you're going, anybody who's using Atopica, Apoquel, uh, Cytopoint, you're throwing a lot of money at that. Oh, and yeah. it's not, not good money. Um, right. I tell them, is, put that into the diet instead. Exactly. Exactly. Put it in the diet, put it in detoxing. You know, mm -hmm. let's, Let's uh, clear the liver of all the toxins. Let's clear, you know, clear out the vaccine um, toxicity that we have in the system. Mm -hmm. And we have so many good companies making really good products to help us be able to do that now. Um, so it's it's actually a lot easier than it used to be because we oh, have I'm sure. a lot more tools yes. available. Um, so one of my, uh, I'll give a plug to any groomer out there who has a TheraClean system, which is a micro bubble. Uh, it's a system out of Japan. It costs about $18,000 for a groomer to buy one of these things, but they're amazing. So in New Jersey, when I would get in rescue dogs that had just horrible skin infections and, you know, train, ear infections, train wrecks, um, we had a groomer who was about an hour away from me who had one of the first ones to bring in a TheraClean system. And she was great. She offered your first TheraClean free for any rescue. So I was like, oh. all right, I'm in. So I took one of my cockers up, two cockers actually that we rescued that were a mess and had their first TheraClean. And I was so impressed with it. Of course, we kept using that groomer, driving an hour each way uh, for all of our dogs. And so we just got in a new cocker rescue here a couple of uh, months ago, he mm -hmm. came as the same train wreck. <laughs> so I went online, I found a TheraClean groomer and she's only a half hour away. It's so much better. <laughs> nice. That's so he's awesome. been going every week. Um, so TheraClean doesn't use any um, chemicals or shampoos or uh, detergents, anything like that. It literally is a water-based system. Um, so it's uh, T-H-E-R-A dash C-L-E-A-N. You can look it up online and they do have a locator for um, for groomers that have the system. It is really amazing. So I strongly recommend it. That's really awesome. I've never heard of that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, the, you know, the nice thing about it is bulldogs are not, well, Frenchies are small, but bulldogs are not the smallest dog in the world. Not really necessarily the easiest dog to bathe in the world. And one of the things that we don't think about with the bathing when we're using all these usually it's medicated shampoos. Mm -hmm. We are continuing to wreck the skin microbiome. Absolutely. Just like we wreck the gut microbiome with all the antibiotics yes. and all the anti-inflammatories, we are wrecking the skin microbiome. So there, again, there are good bacteria <sighs> that live on the skin. We want those because they fight off the bad guys. Mm -hmm. So we always want the, the good guy army <laughs> to be yes. much bigger than the bad guy. And there actually are some shampoos on the market now that actually have probiotics in them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would strongly recommend using something like that or using a water-based system without all those chemicals and detergents. Uh, you'll do a lot better for these. Yeah. Guys, so. I, I don't, I don't bathe my bulldogs very often at all. I mean, every couple of months and, you know, people will ask me and they're like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm bathing mine like every other week. And I'm like, no, you don't want to do that because you're just stripping the skin of the essential things that it mm -hmm. needs to be able to be healthy. Yep. You're just, you're just washing that away. So yep. yeah, I agree with that. Yep. And so, yeah, like even with my dog, I have spaniels um, for my dogs. They don't get bathed very often, except for my puppy. I have to do the underside of the puppy quite often because the <laughs> underside of the puppy gets peed on a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he, he's a bit of a mess, but um, 
And, you know, and I'm really careful about what I use. So really look at the ingredients on your shampoos or soaps or things that you're using. We don't want sulfates and we don't want, you know, all these chemical sounding names in there. Um, I do have a couple favorite companies. So if you go our, on our website, um, drgdmorgan.com, you'll see the companies that I like. And actually, uh, one of those companies is what I use for washing my own hair. Uh, so, and it's actually a sham, a, a soap bar. Uh, I've fallen in love with these bars over the liquid shampoos that they're, they're oh, just I'm have to check that out. Yeah. It's, I, the company's project suds, but, uh, they're apple cider vinegar based. And so oh, nice. the detergent things that, yeah, they're, they're just beautiful essential oils, um, and apple cider vinegar based. So we just traveled, we were gone for two weeks and you know, when you travel, especially if you're going on a plane and you're not allowed to take all these liquids. Mm -hmm. So, you know, taking a big bottle of shampoo if you're going to be gone for a couple of weeks or a big bottle of uh, conditioner. Can't really do that very well anymore. Right. So I took my one little bar of soap, two weeks, does everything. That's awesome. I'll have to check <laughs> that out. <laughs> so silly little things. But um, so stuff that if you're, if you're having, you know, and we have to talk about skin problems just because mm -hmm. bulldogs have so many skin problems, but they have the skin problems because of all the things that we've done wrong to yes. put them in that position. Um, but when you're trying to treat the skin problem, one, that the, the skin is a symptom. It's not mm -hmm. the real problem. It's just right. a symptom of the real problem. But when you're treating that symptom, you want to make sure that you're not making things worse by stripping the good, good microbes and putting a lot of more chemicals on the skin. I really try to encourage people to um, research where the nearest holistic vet is um, to to their home. And, you know, sometimes it's like an hour or a little bit longer than that. But I tell people it's worth it because if you're, you know, hopefully you won't have to go there for very often. But, you know, they're going to they're going to align more with what we're discussing. Um, right. And if you make these better choices, you're going to have a healthier pet and yeah. you're not going to have to go to the vet. I mean, these these bulldog owners are spending thousands and tens of thousands of dollars yearly on these bulldogs and they're not getting any relief from it and no. so if they can take that money and just totally put put the brakes on and just go about it in a completely different way then you know you're you're going to start to see you're going to start to be able to slowly dig out of this situation that you have found yourself in so exactly it's not it's not always going to be convenient yep it's not always convenient. It's not always easy because some right. of these dogs have uh, their gut microbiome is so screwed up that you're like, okay, great. I'll take them off kibble. I'll put them on raw food. And then he has mm -hmm. blowout diarrhea. And yeah. you know, then the backlash is, well, that didn't work. I'm never doing that yeah. again. And you know, it's just, it, it takes time. And so you may need to do a slow transition or you may need to work very hard at repairing some of the damage that's been yeah. done in order to be able to make that transition. So getting them on a good probiotic, maybe putting them through a leaky gut protocol. Absolutely. Well, I feel like most bulldogs have leaky gut. Like if, you, if oh, yeah. they've been through all of those things, they have leaky gut. And I always say like, you, you know, you should look into that and look yep. into, you know, treating that uh, yep. in addition to these other things. So, you know, a lot of times it's not just flipping the switch. It's mm -hmm. saying, oh, I need to start the repair process and that repair process can take a long time. So um, mm -hmm. I remember when I first learned Chinese medicine, um, I was first learning acupuncture. Our instructor said allergy and skin cases are going to make you the craziest of anything that you deal with, which is true. Um, because if, if, <laughs> if you're like my daughter's uh, trainer and she hadn't given her dogs a whole bunch of drugs, so that's why hers got better so fast. Um, but if they've been on these treatments of immune suppressants and, you know, screwed up their guts and they're on prescription diets and all this stuff, however long they've had that skin problem, we were told to expect it to take twice as long to get it better. So if they've had a skin disaster for two years, it could take you four years. And yeah. I have a couple of clients, not bulldogs, but a couple of clients that it took them that long for their dogs to have reasonable existence mm -hmm. and not be breaking out and not be reacting and not be itching. And it's, it's a lot of work, it um, is. but so totally worth it. So totally it, and it can be done. I mean, Mac is, Mac is, uh, 
our rescue, one of our rescues. And he is a, a prime example of it can be done. I mean, this poor guy was given every single vaccine under the sun. He was on Prozac when we got him. He had the worst flank alopecia I've ever seen. I mean, just black sides and awful ear. And I had the hair regrown on the alopecia within six to eight weeks. Um, and his ear, I mean, like I was saying before, every once in a while, it will, we will have like a little bit of a flare up. And, and, and this is why, I mean, we're probably three years in and as the years are progressed, it, those little instances are less, but yeah. you have to just stay the course. And that's why I try yeah. to tell people they get frustrated when they don't see that immediate result or they're a month or two months in and they're like, but he still has all these ear issues. And I'm like, and he's probably going to keep having those ear issues. You have to stay the course. It's, it's, takes time yeah it does yeah our, our guy that we brought in um the conqueror that we brought in in january you know ear infections he was blind uh skin infections his ears are fine now uh, just with diet change his mm -hmm. skin is slowly getting better he goes for his bubble baths um but he's just still itchy uh, so we're still working on that uh but so much better you know we're three months in mm -hmm. so much better um, so I figure we got to give it another few months, but it, it, it is yeah. doable. Um, and it just depends, you know, we don't know this guy's history is found as a strike and then he got everything given to him at the shelter. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, if you have any time to just touch base on, you know, on Apoquil, um, I think that that is always worth mentioning, especially because we're entering into the spring and summer months and a lot of bulldogs, you know, have these flare ups, which I mean, I do believe personally that a lot of these symptoms the dogs are having is uh, blamed on environmental when a lot of times it's just food things, but there, there is in fact environmental factors. I mean, I'm, I'm dealing with some allergies myself yeah. right now. Yeah. But... So, I mean, the, one of the things, if it's going on all year round, it's definitely food. If mm -hmm. it flares up for two weeks during, like we get this yellow pine pollen that literally is an inch thick on everything for a couple of weeks every spring. Um, so, you know, if you get a flare up for a couple of weeks, it's like, okay, great. Well, you know, I know what caused that big deal. It's two weeks. Um, that doesn't mean you need to run for scary immune suppressant drugs. Like let's, you know, wipe them off and get the pollen off of them. Um, you know, wipe down their feet. Don't have them spend as much time outside during those times. Um, you know, I would much rather use an antihistamine. Not that, not that that's perfect, but I'd much rather use an antihistamine yeah. or use herbal support like nettles or quercetin, which are great for allergies. So we can do a lot of things that, that are going to help damp that down. But what happens if you go to your veterinarian with this? It used to be that steroids were handed out like candy. And frankly, I would much rather have my dog take a dose of prednisone than a dose of Apoquel. Like yeah. I have never used Apoquel and I never will. Um, so, uh, you know, prednisone's got short-term side effects. It's in the system for 24 hours and, you know, no big deal. It's done. And that's not an advertisement to run out and get steroids. But um, I'd much rather use a steroid than Apoquel. Apoquel suppresses the immune system. And what happens what has happened over the years is that veterinarians now use Apoquel where we used to use like a short-term steroid for a couple of days or where we used to use an antihistamine for a couple of days. But now they're handing out Apoquel and what happens is, and Apoquel really is designed for use for those cases that have responded to nothing else mm -hmm. allergies are so bad you have to shut off their immune system which we should and it should be short term it should and be it only, should be short yes, term not and what term. happens is your dog gets on it and then they just keep re-upping it mm -hmm. and we have it says it right in the drug insert that causes cancer by the way because we and have it is. the immune system and it is because they can't fight off. We're all yeah. making cancer cells all the time, but our immune system goes, Ooh, that's a weird one. We better kill it. Yeah. And when your immune system is turned off and those weird cells start to form and multiply and divide, the body goes, I don't see anything going on. And so we end up with all these animals with cancer, mm -hmm. with, you know, other autoimmune diseases. It's just, we've had, you know, bone marrow suppression, horrible things that occur secondary to these drugs being used yes. and particularly being used long-term. Yes. Um, one of my patients that came in, 
I love this little dog. She's a little cute fluff ball now, but she wasn't. Um, she had been on Cytopoint and Apoquel for three years, nonstop. She had no hair. She was bright red. She was ripping herself to shreds. I said, I don't think those drugs are working. Mm -hmm. She goes, yeah, they never really did work all that well. Well, they're really not working now. Mm -hmm. You know, but the, the dermatologist kept just, you know, upping doses and adding more. And, and like, that's the definition of insanity. Doing yes. the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. But the big thing with these drugs is they are immune suppressants. You are opening your dog up to a shorter lifespan and to developing cancer. And then that's yes. another whole can of worms that you just oh, really yeah. don't want to have to deal with. So, um, and Apoquil is expensive. I mean, not that, you know, we spend well, it's, tons it's of money plaguing, on It's plaguing this bulldog community. And oh, it's absolutely. very frustrating because what's happening is they're having uh, these issues. Most of the time it's food related. They go in, they say, oh, well, it's probably, probably environmental. So let's go ahead and give you a round of prednisone. Let's give you a round of antibiotics and let's get you started on Apoquil. So they start on it. And usually right in the beginning, it's like, ooh, this is great. Like the cysts are going down and then they're looking better. And then it stops working and then they up it again. And then these dogs get into this vicious cycle that they cannot get out of because then right. when they try to stop the Apoquil, they have this horrible rebound flare up. Yes. yes. People and are like, oh my that. gosh, let me get it back on the Apoquil. And, yep. and they just, they can't get out of it. And yep. we see that with Cyta Point as well. Yes. And, you know, and, and if you have a dog who's been on Apoquil for a long time, you have to wean them off. You can't oh, just stop cold turkey. You're going to have to wean them off because of the rebound effect. Yes. Um, but it because it suppresses the immune system, then they're more open to skin infections, which causes more itching. Mm -hmm. um, and then we put them on antibiotics, which wrecks their microbiome on their skin and in their gut. And it just becomes this downhill spiral yep. into a mess. Yes. So, and that is what is happening with this yeah. breed. And so yeah. that is what I'm trying to help people understand and give them resources and have them research themselves because you don't want to fall into that. And the ones that have, those are the ones that are really, really struggling to dig out yeah. of it. It, it. They can, but it, I mean, we're talking years it's probably yeah. going to take. So exactly. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. So we got to get a good microbiome going. We got to heal the leaky gut. We got to heal the skin. And that's where uh, I love the, the micro bubble baths that I was talking about, the TheraClean, because uh, a lot of times you don't have to use antibiotics. If you have a groomer that can do a TheraClean a couple times a week at the beginning, and then you just, you know, taper off, mm -hmm. um, it can make a huge difference because you don't need the antibiotics. And anytime we can avoid antibiotics, we want to do that. Right. If, you know, if they have a localized infection, and you really feel like you need an antibiotic, try to go for something topical rather than something oral. Let's treat a localized area rather than wrecking the entire system. Um, so there's a lot of different ways around it. There are a lot of um, antibacterial essential oils, antibacterial herbs, so many things that you can do instead. Yeah, absolutely. Yep.